Hello, welcome to 5 things to know about Java. My name is Arun Gupta and I'm the Java EE and Glassfish guy at Oracle. I'll share 5 exciting things that you should know about Java today. So let's look at the very first thing about Java. As you write servlets up until now in Java EE 5, you need at least two files. As you can see, on the left you have a deployment descriptor and on the right what you have is a class. Well, you need at least these two files to get your servlet running. But in terms of Java EE 6, all of that is condensed into just one class and all the information in the deployment descriptor is now part of your annotation at web servlet. Your name and your URL patterns are easily captured over there. So as a result, your servlet is just one class file and web.xml becomes purely optional. The second thing I want to talk about Java is, you know, simplified packaging as provided by EJB 3.1. Up until Java EE 5, you had to bundle your beans or EJBs in a beans.jar file. Then your servlets and your web XMLs and your index.html's all into a var file. All of those become together into a ear file. So there's a ear, a var, and a jar file. Too much packaging for me. In Java EE 6, we can have a simple var file. You can put all your beans in the webinf classes. You can put your servlet in the webinf classes as well. And guess what happens to web XML, as I said earlier? Purely optional. So that's kind of cool. The third thing about Java I want to talk about is Java Server Faces 2.0. Now, this JSR also got an extreme makeover as part of uh, Java EE 6. Some of the key points over there is instead of using JSP, you can actually use facelets as a templating language for the page. Now you're writing your front-end logic purely in XHTML and CSS and this allows you to create composite components or custom components much easier without reading, writing any Java code or XML deployment descriptors. In JSF itself, the Ajax support is integrated that allows you to partial refresh or partial render a page very easily building on the momentum of optional deployment descriptor, faces-config.xml is optional in most of the cases, and all of that information can be easily captured in uh, annotations. The next thing about Java that I would like to, like to talk briefly about is Java Persistence API 2. This is yet another API that got an extreme makeover in Java E6. The key focus over there has been improved object relational mapping, allowing you to have a much richer Java model from the database perspective. Something new that we added in JPA2 is a type safe criteria API that allows you to write type safe query language. Instead of using JPQL, which in which you write basically string based query language, this is type safe. Um, you can have much better tooling and much robust programs where the errors are detected much earlier. There are other things like expanded and richer JPQL second level cache in a standard way using JPA2, new locking modes, and some standard configuration options for your persistence.xml. The fifth thing that I would like to share about uh, Java is how you can easily do web services in Java EE6. And it provides a complete stack for doing SOAP-based and RESTful web services. Metro is a high performance, extensible, easy to use web services stack already integrated in Java EE6. With that, you can actually write a simple Hello World web service to all the way a reliable, secure, transactional, and even .NET interoperable web services. In terms of RESTful web services, JAX RS or Java API for RESTful web services is now part of the Java EE platform. You take a plain old Java, o, Java object or POJO based object, add an annotation to it like add path, and then that object becomes a resource accessible at that path. On a method, you add at get annotation, and that method gets invoked whenever HTTP get is invoked on the resource. It's very intuitive, very simple, and very easy to use. Now, we have covered five things you need to know about Java. There is actually a sixth thing you need to know about Java as well. Oracle University now offers a Java Pass that gives you a full one year access to the top 10 Java courses. Plus, you get a certification voucher. So, when you're finished with the training, you can take the exam to get certified as a Java programmer or developer. The Java Pass is a flexible education subscription program that enables you to attend Oracle University's top 10 Java courses in a live virtual format for one year 
at an extremely discounted rate. It also includes one certification voucher so you can become Java certified. As you can see from this list, these classes will teach you a lot more about the topics I have covered in this video. There are courses for beginners and experts and you can take any of them or all of them over the course of a year. No travel necessary to take training and an ability to get Oracle certified and high-end Java courses not available elsewhere. So all in all, Java Pass is a great deal and an introductory offer that won't last forever. So sign up now and save big on Java training and certification. For more information, visit uh, education.oracle.com. Hey, hope you had fun learning six, not five things about Java. And we certainly hope to see you at one of the future Java courses by Oracle University. Have a good one and thank you for listening.